Hello everyone. So I welcome you again in this lecture and today we are going to talk about graph traversal techniques. So in this lecture, mainly we are talking about two fundamental techniques of graph traversing. One is called BFS called known as uh, breadth first search and the other is DFS depth first search. So we'll uh, discuss in detail that what are these techniques and their algorithms. And also we will see that what different data structures are used to implement these techniques. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so as I told you that for graph traversing, we have two standard method of traversing. So when I say traversing, traversing means our objective is to visit the nodes of the given graph. So we may be interested to find uh, what are the different nodes exist in the graph. So we want to visit every node or you may be searching any particular node based on some situation. So in any case, you need to uh, you need to know some logic or some strategy so that you can visit the vertices of this graph. So the two techniques used for uh, doing the graph traversing is breadth first search and depth first search. We call it as BFS and DFS. So two techniques will help us to tra do traversing, but uh, in terms of implementation, they are they are different. They are using different data structures. So if you want to implement BFS, then Q will be used. And for DFS, we are using STEC. In both the algorithms, uh, the approach is uh, somewhat similar. And here we are using one variable status. Now this status is uh, helping us to uh, process these nodes. So the status can take th three values during the processing and during the entire process it can have three values, values one, two, or three. So this is the meaning of these three values. Initially, when you start working uh, for traversing the graph using any of the method, we will set the value one of the status for every node. So when the value of the node is one, or you can say if the status is one, that means every node is ready for, for processing. When status is having value 2, it means waiting, waiting to be processed. Or when you are inserting the node into the data structure that you have used for your purpose. So if you are working with the BFS, you will be using the queue. So when you insert any item into the queue, that means you are keeping the status equal to 2. Or if you are working with the DFS, in that case, we will be using stack. So you need to push the node. So whenever you are performing the push operation, you will be moving to the, wait, uh, to the waiting status and the value will be two. So whenever you are inserting or pushing the node into the, the, to the corresponding data structure, the status becomes two and it means the waiting. It is waiting to be processed. And whenever you uh, delete or remove, means if you are working with the queue, you will be doing the deque operation. Or if you're working with the stack, you are doing the pop operation. In both the cases, the value will change to 3 and it means the node has been processed. So we'll see that how this uh, status can be used uh, in this different algorithm. So first we'll start with the BFS, the, the breadth first search. The strategy of the breadth first search says that uh, we have to start from the root. And from that root, we will find all the neighbors of that root so we have to explore all the neighboring node and then for each of these neighbor again we will find the neighbors of these neighbors so we keep on moving with this strategy until we reach to our goal until we reach to the particular vertex that you are searching so uh, to, uh, to, uh, to 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 summarize that what the strategy says so we can write in the two points we start examining the node A. So here we are saying that node A is we are assuming as a root vertex, and from the root vertex we will look for all the neighbors. And then in the next step, for each of these neighbors, for all for each of these nodes, which are actually the neighbors of of the root node, we will again look for the neighbors of these and uh, for these nodes to proceed. And we will keep on uh, searching uh, in this way. We, and we keep on working in this way. So the the main focus is is or the uh, or the main job here is to we need to uh, keep a track of the neighbors of the node on which we are working. So 
we start working on the root node so we have to track the neighbors of the root node and then we have to make sure that all the neighbors have been processed and also to make sure that the they are processed only one time not more than once so we need uh, some uh, some technique and this can be accomplished by using a data structure called q so q will help us to track all these nodes uh, which we are calling as the neighbors of that given node and also it will make uh, make sure that every node can be processed only once with the help of this logic of the status so the already we have discussed that we are going to use one variable status that holds three values 1 2 and 3 and the value 1 2 and 3 will help us to to maintain this uh, the this uh, scenario that uh, what is the status of every node so the node can have three status either uh, value equals to 1 that means the node is ready to be uh, ready to be processed node uh, status equals to 2 that means it has already been inserted or pushed or enqueued into the data structure and when i say status equals to 3 that means it has already been processed and it will be decued and popped from the data structure okay so keep in mind that when we say bfs the bfs can be implemented using a queue data structure so let us take one example to understand in a better way okay so before we take one example let us go to the formal algorithm that how the things will work so we will uh, first uh, look to this algorithm and then we will use this algorithm to uh, to traverse our given graph okay so this algorithm consists of six step the step one says say the status set status equals to 1 that means initially when you start working with any graph we will set every node uh, equals to 1 and that means that all nodes are ready to be processed then enqueue the starting node a and set it as status to 2 so we start with the starting node a that means we start with the root of the of the given graph now when i say root actually we need to uh, consider one one vertex as a starting vertex and i am calling it as a root here so here the node a is a root here and or you can say the starting node and we set it as status to 2 so whenever you uh, set the status 2 that means you are going to insert into the data structure so here we are using queue so you are doing the enqueue operation and that actually it means it is in the now waiting state it is actually waiting for the turns to be processed now repeat step 4 and 5 until the queue is empty then we have to perform this operation in a loop until the queue becomes empty and the moment the queue becomes empty you have to stop and when you stop you will find that uh, your your answer is actually available to you okay so the queue are node n we will look to the queue and then we will apply the the queue operation process it so whenever you will apply the the queue operation whenever you will be taking something from the queue that means that node has been processed and we will uh, keep the status equals to 3 that means it has been processed now enqueue all the neighbors of the n whenever we dequeue any node after dequeuing it we will look to the neighbors of that node and we will enqueue all the neighbors and uh, these neighbors which we, uh, which are which were enqueued into the queue are going to be uh, to set it status equals to 2 means they are moving from the ready state to the waiting state so keep in mind whenever any node are are enqueued so whenever you do the enqueue operation or let me write like this whenever we do enqueue operation our status is going to change from 1 to 2 and whenever you apply dequeue operation the status will change from 2 to 3 and initially all the nodes are having status 1 so when you apply the enqueue it goes to 2 and when you dequeue it goes to 3 and whenever you dequeue you need to do enqueue of all the neighbors so this is a uh, th th these are the some important point that we have to uh, keep in mind okay so let us apply this steps in some graph to see that what output we will get okay so moving to the next 
Let us take this example. This is one graph given to us and this graph is representing one real life problem. It is representing one scenario. So what is the scenario? So the graph represents the daily flights between the different cities. So basically these are representing the cities of any country you can say and 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 uh, it is representing the flight so if the edge is there that means the flight is available between the two cities so if i say a to d that means the flight is available from a to d we want to fly from city a to i with minimum stop our objective is to reach from a from the city a to i with minimum number of stop so when i say stops means if I am now there are many possibilities to go to I you can go from A to D D to G and G to I that means you have to have this uh, one stop and two stop so we want to reach to our destination with minimum number of stop likewise you can find many other possible ways are also uh, may be available there so we are looking for the best possible way to reach to the I now how this algorithm is going to help us that we will uh, that we will see now the very first thing is we need to have one representation of this graph so graph that we actually we are uh, looking here uh, in this format but actually when you when you think in terms of computer the computer is actually uh, uh, storing the graph in the form of this uh, representation so this graph is represented using a agency list so in the computer memory this is actually stored now here you can see already we have discussed that how to represent the graph using agency list you can see that we have so many vertices are there so we this is all list all the vertices are shown here and then this is a linked list means from a we have and the, the neighbors b c and d so it contains b c and d similarly you can see from h we have i and we also have e and i so if you can see from h we have e and i so every uh, list element or you can say every node will will actually represent or uh, tell the or point to the neighbors of that particular node so we'll apply the algorithm so moving to the next now the very first step is we have to look to the root means the starting vertex so our starting vertex is a now this is our graph given to us so we will uh, the very first step is we have to enqueue this so we will enqueue this now let us understand what uh, what kind of uh, entry we are making here so we know that when we work with the queue we have two pointers front and rear front is basically uh, tell us the first uh, element position rear will tell us the last element position whenever you do the nq operation we always increment the front whenever we do the dq operation we, incre we increment the rear so initially the front and rear equals to zero and we will be going to insert or the nq the starting root and when i say starting root means it has no origin so or this this represents the origin or the predecessor or the previous node so the origin is null that means is the starting okay so we have to dq this so initially all is actually uh, you can say one and when you insert this it becomes 2 now when you decue this so the status of this this is the status this represents the status a status is one variable that can have value 1 2 and 3 so when you when you uh, when you remove this so the status of this becomes 3 okay and whenever you apply the decue operation the front is going to increment so the front will become 1 and you will decue this a and when you deq you will look to the neighbors so we have b c d that we have to enqueue so we will enqueue this b c and d into the queue and uh, whenever we you enqueue you need to uh, increase the rear pointer so it will go one two and three so now rear is here and the front is here okay and this represent the the origin means bcd we had we get from a now next is again we have to delete or decue so we will decue this you will decue this now also we have to keep in mind because we have inserted bc and d 
so the b the status of b will change to 2 because uh, whenever we uh, enq uh, the status will change to 2 so b c and d will all change to 2 now then you will uh, deq the deq the element and element will be decued from the front only because it's a property of the queue that element can be deleted from the front so the front is actually b so you are going to delete this means deq this it becomes 3 now whenever you deq you will always increase the front pointer so the front will come to here and you will look to the neighbors of b so whenever you deq you have to do two things one is you need to increment the front pointer and also you need to look to the neighbor so neighbor is e that you are going to insert or nq into the so you are going to insert this so when you insert this you will going to increase increment the rear so rear will become 4 it was rear now rear is here okay and also you need to make an entry so here e e you are getting from b so the origin of e is b similarly you can move to the next so now again you will deq you will deq the c now e already you have inserted so e is going to become status 2 now c you are going to deq it becomes 3 so when you deq the front is going to increase so front will be coming here it will become 3 now and you will look to the to the neighbors b and g but b is already uh, having value 3 so we will not do anything we can only nq the nodes which have the status 1 because the neighbors of c is b and g but b is already having uh, the value 3 even if the v is having 2 we are not going to uh, nq it because 2 means already in the queue now we look for the g so if you go g g is 1 so we are going to nq this and when you nq this you will going to increment the rear so rear is going to increment here and when you insert the g g's origin is c okay and also you will increment the rear here so we will move we will keep on doing in this way so what is the next so far you can just have a look here that this is d e and g has d e and g has 2 so d has e and g has 2 this is 1 1 1 and this is all 3 so far we have seen okay so already uh, also one thing to note here that we have the front is at the d and the rear is having a g so front was here and rear was here in the previous step now again you will deq so whenever you deq this d becomes 3 and you have to increment front will go here front will go here to the next step front will go here and uh, it will increment front will be 4 plus 1 5 and when you when you deq this d you have to look to the neighbors c so if you look to the c c is already in the queue no need to do anything g g is already in the queue no need to do anything so it will remain the same here now you will be uh, doing again deq operation you will deq this e so it will become 3 now you can see here this is c the neighbors are c which is already 2 here so we are not going to uh, nq here f f is 1 here f is 1 here so we are going to make it nq here so f is going to be inserted you can say and the, the rear will be increased so whenever you do the nq operation then you need to increment the rear so now rear is going to become 6 and the the origin of f is e okay moving to next your uh, front is here uh, one thing to keep in mind that already we have uh, uh, decued this so because when you have decued this we have to increment the front so our front has already been moved to the next position that is here and uh, your rear is here you can see here now when you decue when you decue the g so it becomes 3 and when you decue it becomes here and this is f is already uh, been in the in, in the this and h h is not not in the in, in, in the queue so you will h and i both will be going to be enqueued so h and i and you will be going to make your rear here so you can say this is your front and this is your 
rear. Now you can see you are looking to move to I. Already you have reached to this ith node and then you will stop here because we are doing traversing to reach to the ith uh, node. Here we are calling this I as a city so we are able to reach from A to I. Now what is the path we need to follow? So you can see from the origin. So I we have reached from G. Okay. So you can look here G. G is here. So G we have reached from C. So you can look for the C. C we have reached from A. And we can see this A. So we can say that we move from uh, A to C to G and I. So the path is A to C to G to I is a path that need to be followed in, able, in, in order to reach to the destination. So this is how we can make use of the Q data structure to implement the algorithm of BFS and we can do traversing to different vertex of the given graph. Okay, so let us talk about the BFS uh, application where we can uh, use this. So already we have as a, as a name suggests bread for search. This is basically used for searching and it is also used to find out all the nodes of a given graph it is also used to find out all the connected components of a given graph it is also used to find out to find out the distance between the two nodes uh, or uh, two vertex u and v in the unweighted graph and also in the weighted graph so these are some examples where we can see that bfs can be used in the next uh, part we will see that what is dfs and how the dfs can be implemented so this is all for the BFS and next we will see what is DFS.